We filled the hill for a knockout match against the lossless ruse. This is the Sash Women's, most definitely not the official podcast of the SM Football Club's women's side. And my name is Courtney, as always, and I'm joined by Ari and Jord here at Castaway Studios in beautiful Nam. How are we, fellas? I uh, can't complain. Yeah. No, taking the result. Yeah. You know, putting that to the side. Had a pretty lovely weekend. Nice. Um, and I, I won't let the North Melbourne kangaroos bring me down. No. What about you, Ari? Yeah, had a shocker. <laughs> like outside of football? Yeah. Are you okay? Yeah. My battery died in my car, which oh, is no. like annoying. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. No problem. And then, but the fact that it died completely fucked some footwell module electronics thing in my oh, car. Oh, no. And now my indicators don't work and power windows don't work. And yeah, it's going to cost me like one enough grand to fix, which is oh, pain in the mate. ass. So I've had a mare. Yeah. Had a mare caught. Uh, it's like my dad likes, so he's got the, this old car, um, this old Mustang from like, it's like 60 something, 65 something. Um, and he, sh- he popped the bonnet on it when I um, finally saw this fucking car. And he was like, I can see everything. And that's how I like it. <laughs> yeah, the, it's like the one, no more bells and whistles. Yeah, the good thing about old cars is, you know, anything could be fixed with exactly. a bit of elbow grease. And exactly. Literal grease. Yeah, yeah. Oh, great. I had a pretty good weekend. I got a cool new tattoo. Yeah, um, very fun. My little guy is looking out the window. It's like a like little prince almost. Like his own little Yeah, kind of I think he's like a little imp in his pajamas. He's cute. He is very cute. Yeah, thank you. Um, and I went to a hen's. And then I went to the footy. Pretty chill. Nice, nice. How was Chilling. the hens? It was fun. We just went, like, it was a, I went to, like, the lunch part of it because I was um, babysitting a 19-year-old cat over the weekend whose name is wow. Mam. I'm glad you said um, cat. Yeah. I was, like, yeah I, was like, <laughs> I was babysitting a 19-year-old. If I'm babysitting a 19-year-old, <laughs> that's, that's weird. Well, yeah. no, I mean, you know, who knows. Um, yeah, no, a 19-year-old cat named Mam. So I had to go home and give her a meds. And it meant I couldn't kick on with everyone else, um, which is fine. Went to Bodega Underground, had some Mexican. That's nice. Nice. Can't yeah, complain. Can't complain. Shall we get into it? Let's do it. Sadly, yes. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> it has the vision to square back to Press Barkas for a first goal as a bomber. And as she so often has, secures victory. Something to celebrate for us in the 150th year. The Bombers with their first AFL W. Wales, about 45, lets it go right to the line, and it is all the way home. I'm Georgia Nanscorn, and you're listening to The Sash. Round eight, we had a return to the hill, and we filled the hill, which we'll talk about later. But we saw Essendon being defeated by North Melbourne, uh, which I think we all knew was going to happen. 117 to 81058. Uh, our goals, our one and only goal was for Bonnie Too Good. First goal of the season for her, which we love. Love to see it. Love to see that. Um, and for North Melbourne, we had three from Sherlaw, two from Randall, and one apiece from Wall King and Jazzy Garner. Uh, our predictions, Ari. First goal kicker. <laughs> <laughs> First and only. Yeah. <laughs> That's good to see. And you backed it up again with best on with uh, Gay, Maddie Gay. Yeah, she was awesome. Nice. She did have a great game. And then, Geordie, I think you were the closest yeah. with the result and margin. Uh, we, we lost by 51, but you... You said fifty five last week, and yeah, I gave great you result. Sh- you gave I gave you shit for it. <laughs> yeah, look, I normally enjoy being are. right, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's a pyrrhic victory. Yes, <laughs> yeah. I'm not happy about it. Yeah, it's that. like you. It's like you said that, and there was a monkey's paw that just like curled its <laughs> finger over, and was like, "Sure, I'll do that." Um, but there were some good things that came out of the the game. I think um, you know we we clocked a record with the biggest banner in AFLW history. Woo. Um, until it ne- it was great until it nearly. Blew over. over and <laughs> fell on the team. Um, I think everyone kind of held their breath at that point. Um, I kind of missed. So the banner, the big banner, was because Bonnie Too Good had a tiny one for her fiftieth. Yeah. Is that the story? Yeah, I think it was like the whole thing behind it was like we've seen quite a lot of milestones, and you know they deserve to be like celebrated in such a big elaborate way. Um, but yeah, Bonnie had like this tiny little banner for her 50th. So I think it was game number like 62 or something. Yeah, for it was her. like a random. Yeah. <laughs> random number. But um, there are a few other players on there as well that okay. were just like, 
and it was huge. I think it's like, from what I was looking, I, I don't know if it looked like it was about the same size as the banners that they have at like Marvel and yeah, the MCG, like right? It, yeah. And just, just because they had it at Windy Hill, it looked fucking mm. huge. Mm. Um, so that was great to see. And then, like I said before, um, we filled the hill. We had 4,336 heads there, which is the biggest crowd that Windy Hill's seen since 1991. It's crazy. Yeah. I haven't checked any numbers, but I'm assuming that's our second biggest crowd we've played in front of in general behind that behind that Hawthorne Marvel. One. Yeah. yeah, I'd yeah. say I'm so. I'm guessing. I'd say so. I'm pretty so. sure that Marvel game was like, I don't know, over oh, 10,000. Maybe the GMHBA uh, final, potentially. Maybe, or maybe there was one Icon game, which was pretty full, oh, yeah. but I'm not sure if... We'd have to look back. Yeah. Mm. If you know, uh, let us know in the chat, <laughs> in the Discord, <laughs> um, and we can verify that for you. Um, other good things, I think we had some really good pressure on North, like especially coming into, like, we didn't let them run away with it in that first quarter, which I think they really could have. Um, you know, it's it was a 21-point first quarter, so they were 21-0, 20, and it was pretty much like 90% in their forward 50 but, but also their goals, they were like dobbing it from everywhere. Oh, yeah. So yeah. it wasn't like they weren't. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? It wasn't like they were just running through on goals straight in front. Absolutely. They were having to kick. And the, really... set, the set shouts weren't easy. Like no. Yeah, that Sheila one. That the Sheila camera, one. Yeah. yeah. Swung about yeah. six and meters. <laughs> but you could tell she wanted <laughs> to do that. Was the was like the umpire was like, you have to move across. You have to move across to like get on the mark line. But if she did that, the mark line would have been like in the crowd. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I think we we worked really well with that like just getting on top of them quickly and early yeah and i just maintaining actually, that pressure i liked our heat at the contest i mm. thought like it felt like we were really hitting hard like yeah we got a big rev up before oh god yeah to to make them earn it yeah which i feel like they did um but yeah we just couldn't get any sort of field position i don't know they just have this like incredible defensive wall that's yeah. so hard to to break yeah. through um and I think, like we said last week, having that, like, depth of, like, a right up the field of so much experience and you could tell that there were, like, and I'll speak about this a little bit more, like, when we talk about the bad stuff, but, like, there's the just the level of experience that they have is just, like, on this yeah. completely yeah. next level to us. Um, that's definitely, that's definitely yeah. true, but I think, like, I think Nat Wood has to look at the structure a little bit because... It sort of played out almost exactly like the Bulldogs game played out mm. in terms of we had one behind the ball, so mm. did they. Mm. But it's one thing when you're playing against the Bulldogs who <laughs> you're much better than, they're not going to score against you. It yeah. ends up where two points to zero at quarter time. But when yeah. you're against a team like North, they get an opportunity, they're going to score. Oh, absolutely. So, like, yeah, I just don't know how much of a benefit it is to start the game that way mm. and have no ability to get it out of our defense, you know, we're always playing on the back foot. Mm. And I think that's like asking for trouble mm. against a team like that, especially. Yeah. So I don't think we did that against Adelaide. I don't think we play, were playing yeah. like that from the off mm. against yeah. Adelaide. Um, yeah. It's like, you know, it's, it's, it would be like as smart as trying to do like a deep defensive switch in front of like with a North Melbourne team. It's like, you don't risk it. Mm. You just, you play a bit smarter on that. I think, um, yeah, uh, how we go after half time? I feel like we we kind of picked up a little bit and and really held them to it. Yeah, I was I was pretty impressed by it. Like getting getting torched so badly in that first half on the scoreboard, it would have been pretty easy just to sort of pack it in a little bit and sort mm. of roll through to the end of the game. Like mm. we see so often as Bomber fans that <laughs> you know we can get absolutely thumped, and it's often because of a lack of effort and a lack of drive, not yeah. so much a lack of you know gaping you know skill levels mm. um so it was nice to see that you know they did actually just keep you know plugging along i think they only kicked two goals to our one in that second half mm. which yeah, i think it's a pretty admirable effort to try and hold on a little bit absolutely you gotta say though that i think the girls have have always been that yeah that definitely. even when we've like in our first season against brisbane we got blown out early and then after half time we really managed to make mm. it a contest again and we did yeah. that against adelaide in the past as well where they really they never throw in the towel they never yeah. just yeah you know, very proud bunch yeah, yeah. They, you know they'll crack it in hard and even if it, you know it's obvious we're not going to win this game and scoring let's, really let's just try and keep it let's just try yeah you know make sure you know we we're at hard, as hard at the contest as we were at the start. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I went with some North Melbourne friends and they 
noticed that like I think in that third quarter they had like quote unquote parked the bus Mm -hmm. so you could tell that they'd kind of taken their foot off the gas a little bit um and I think once they maybe after that quarter once they realized that we were keeping that pressure really high they put their foot down again in that final quarter and tried to really make a you know blow blow that um that margin out a bit more yeah and I think we really we had I know we only kicked one goal one but we actually you know, we kicked like two out on the full. Mm. Yeah. And there was a couple that didn't quite make the distance shots from like yeah. 35, 40. Like we had... We had a sniff. Yeah, we had opportunities in that second half where yeah. through ball movement and through whatever, we, we got a lead up. Mark, you know, uh, the Nan Scorn brilliant mm. play on the wing mm. to run inside 50. Like we were creating stuff in the second half. We didn't manage to really put it on the scoreboard, but we, we were starting to make stuff happen. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I was a bit sad, but that that first shot on goal that Bonnie had that I feel like she maybe got spooked by the siren. Like oh, I think reckon? that yeah, I was standing behind those goals watching it happen and she was kind of like running like started to run in for to take the shot and then the siren went and I think that kind of like threw off her rhythm a little bit because mm. she kind of flubbed it. I don't even think she got it. I think that just went out on the fall. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It, like helicopter. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Shall we look at the bads? The long list, yeah. Uh, we, we do have to mention Maddie Gay, who had we do, a crazy We do, we do, no. There is a reason why she got best on. Yeah, I mean, she was just everywhere. Yeah. And, of course, there was, you know, a lot of work for her because <laughs> yeah, we the ball was in our defence a lot. But, um, but yeah, she was just she was just everywhere, floating around, intercept yeah. marking. Yeah. I just felt like any time the ball was breaking down from north around our 50, it was because she was – you know, getting an, an intercept, getting a fist in, making something happen. And then her ball use was really good as well. Mm. She was spraying, especially from kickouts. Like we, mm. we were taking marks on like 50 on the boundary because she was <laughs> nailing kicks from the kickouts. So, yeah. Yeah, she just had, she had a great game. Yeah. 30 touches, 18 kicks, six marks, four tackles, 540 metres gained, yeah. which is about... Two hundred and fifty more than anyone else in the red in the red and black. Yeah, um, that's a that's a big run. Yeah, yeah, big time. I think Amy Gaylor had a good game as mm. well. Um, we just kind of noticed her pretty much at every contest and just really running ragged and and really throwing her body at it as well, which is really sick to see. Yeah, she's developed like really quickly oh, yeah. this year. Yeah, yeah, she's got that confidence really, really quickly, and I think only that's only been kind of heightened probably by the, her. Um, Rising star nom as well, mm. where she's like, let's fucking go. It's like a great mix of like, so dependable, um, mm. reliable, mm. but also she has a bit of X factor as well. It's mm. like, she's going to show out more and more and more. Like yeah. she's going to be a serious, serious player for us. Yeah. Please stay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously we got pretty thumped in all areas of the game. You know, our clearances inside fifties, marks inside fifties as well. I noticed, um, contestant possessions, you know, yeah. Even though we had like less ball, we also had like 20 less tackles as well. Um, I did notice that there was like, I don't know, there was like some points where we just weren't sticking those tackles, we weren't sticking marks, especially when it was like an uncontested mark and it was just like not getting to the ball in time and it's just kind of slipping out of fingers and Mm. bouncing off and all that kind of stuff. And it's like you can't make those mistakes against a team like North Melbourne because they will punish you Mm. for that. And they did, you know. They're so physically imposing. like Yeah, God, yeah. Like they, they do stick the tackles, they hit hard. They've got the tall timber. Like, we couldn't deal with their tolls all day, really. Mm. Like, I mean, they're just a bloody good side, really. It's just crazy. The, the one thing that really stood out um, that I think this game showed up was our lack of pace on the outside. Mm. Like, the, I think the problem we had all game was as soon as North won it at the source, got it to the outside, we just could not keep up with their outside runners, their halfbacks, especially like O'Shea, mm, mm. Um, was just killing us. She was just so quick. Um, and, and yeah, we, we ended up sort of like out of position constantly because yeah. they just broke so much faster than we could yeah. get it together. And I yeah. think like we're missing Van der Heuvel, who really does provide that sort of run for us. And I think Amber Clark can do that kind mm, of thing. George yeah. a little bit. Yeah, she, I mean, Emma Clark's more sort of power than sort of Speed. raw pace. Yeah. But I think we, we do need more of those kind of players who can really move with the ball quickly. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
In the same way that, like, you know, in, in the AF, in the men's, you know, that halfback, running halfbacks who, who are explosive yep. are a needed part of the game. I don't really think, if Sophie's not there, we don't really have much of it. Mm, mm. Yeah, I think it just kind of made us look quite in, inexperienced and very underconfident against mm. them, um, especially in the matchups. It's just like you could you could tell that there was a very big kind of gap of like, mm. you know, because we are quite a young team mm. and they've been in it for quite a while. And, yeah, the their kind of depth of experience and confidence is just, you know, yeah. I mean, very glaring. It, it would be scary walking out and seeing, you know, Emma King. Oh, I would Garner shit myself. And, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ter- terrifying. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they're forwards. Had like, like they just monstered, yeah, yeah. Defense, yeah. all game, yeah. And, but like you know, s- they had size, experience, height, that power. Oh yeah, you could tell they're you know. so much taller than yeah. us. It's like fucking Space Jam. Like they are the monsters yeah, yeah. Of, the, of the AFLW. I mean, and they are the finished article, so it's not surprising that they are. There is this gap, you know, yeah. we're in our third season. Yeah, you know, with a young list, it's not surprising, but it shows that there are dif- there are places where it's not just experience yeah. that's the difference it's yeah. also size and and attributes that we yeah. don't have yet yeah i was really impressed by the way that their forwards spread in, inside 50 they found space really really mm. well which is so impressive especially when we have that spare back being able to find a little bit of a paddock to lead up into like yeah like the the way that their forwards work together and uh, facilitate each other is mm. yeah, it's it's hard to hard to hard to beat mm the thing is, though, that that it, it all sort of flows from from one thing to the other because their b- ball movement is so fast that they f- and their forwards obviously know what the game plan is that they can react quicker than the defense can. And yeah. So it's like it's it's a whole package. It's like yeah. everything happens quick up the ground. The forwards are on the move before the d- defense before can- they know what's going. Yeah, on. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And then yeah, in our first half, I mean, like we didn't get it much out of um, our defensive 50. But when we did, there was just kind of no one there to kick to. So I don't know whether that's the game plan of just trying to flood and and play as defensively as possible. But, like, you do need to have someone kind of dropping back Yeah. in the off chance that we manage to ping it out. Yeah. And at the very least, like, there needs to be a bailout kick that everyone knows about pregame that, you know, if we're – transitioning quickly and we haven't managed to move players up the field yet, this mm. is where you've got to kick it to. And, mm. you know, whether it's Bonnie or whoever else has to try and get the ball out of bounds yeah. on our forward flank if she's against two players. You know, like there has to be, this is where you go this if there's no options. It. Yeah, Not just blasting it forward to nobody and it's straight back <laughs> the other way again. Um, shall we stay in Ari's gripe corner? <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, like, uh, it's... I'll preface this by saying that when I watch when I watch a game, when I watch one of our games, I take notes on my phone, right? Yeah. And there's usually like, I don't know, maybe 15, 20 dot points, just yeah. you know, things things I notice, whatever. This game I had three. Oh. And okay. one of them was the umpiring. Yeah, I think I had that as well. <laughs> because and it was my first one, and I basically couldn't take notes for the rest of the game because I was so <laughs> fucking pissed off about the umpiring. <laughs> There was some very interesting umpiring happening, like, um, we, like right across the game. I don't think I've ever seen men's or women's. I don't think I've ever seen an Essendon team get that badly slaughtered by the umpires. It was umpires. real bad. It was like every. It wasn't just like every fifty-fifty went against us. It was like ones that were blatant, like the the George and Anne score on holding the ball. Yeah. It wasn't even a tackle. She yeah. had a she yep. had a jumper and just sort of. S- through her, yeah, yeah, I let go, but you know the play's still in the air when she lets go, yeah. and it's a sling tackle, dangerous tackle, not holding the ball. Uh, like there were so many horrendous decisions. Yeah, there Gail- was a um, Ga- Gaylor taking that- a mar- going for a mark gets completely wiped out. Yeah, and then like in the next second, you know, it's somehow turned over and they yeah, get free. there's like a slight arm. <laughs> In the vicinity of the ball, and it's over the shoulder. You know, yeah. like, I don't know. It was just there no was high one where a North Melbourne player has been tackled to the ground, couldn't dispose of it, so she places the ball on the ground and then soccers it during like while yeah. she's being tackled. Like, how is that no, that's the legal. Ball. <laughs> <laughs> um, and there was that like that tackle on Daria in the first quarter, which was 
fucking so high. Yeah. Mm. And that wasn't and it was cool. Hold, and it was played like holding the ball. It was played holding anyway. the ball and then they got a free from yeah, it. And, it and like even the people behind me who were all North supporters being like, I don't think we should have gotten that yeah. free. Yeah. That was, I think the thing that why I found it so frustrating was it wasn't just like we didn't get the call. It wasn't like we didn't get the holding the ball we should have got. It was that it went the opposite way mm. every time. Yeah. It was like, it wasn't just not holding the ball. It was a high tackle. Yeah. It wasn't just chopping the you know like it was it went the opposite way mm. every single time and like uh, you could hear the crowd going yeah, mental. yeah. oh the, bro- and the it Bronx wasn't... cheer when we finally got one is one yeah, of yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and like commentators never usually mention that kind of Bronx mm. cheer thing but it was so loud and yeah. so obvious yeah like, oh the Essendon fans are happy about that one <laughs> it, it was some like, serious yes. Geelong third quarter stuff from you know season just gone in the men's comp it was just mental what I will say is that had it been reversed and we were getting those dreadful, dreadful calls, we probably still would have been beaten. Um, oh, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. We, yeah. We all know that. <laughs> yeah, I'm just, like, that's Even a if the wind had gone our way, yeah. yeah. That's <laughs> why I think it's fine to like talk about how shit it was because I, I really don't think this is about mm. that the result would have been different had it yeah. gone the other mm. way. Like, you're completely right. Um, like, despite all that, it was, yeah, free kicks was 16 to 23. So it wasn't like... That first quarter must have been two to seven. Or yeah, something like it was that. insane. Yeah, but like the the thing is, is that I think when it's happening, I think it has a serious effect on the team because it feels like you don't get rewarded for yeah. what you're doing. You don't get. Yeah. You're not getting rewarded for creating a holding the ball. You're not getting rewarded for being first to the contest for a mark because, mm. and it's not only you're not being rewarded, you're being punished for mm. for doing the right thing. And like, you know, it's probably to the girls' credit, they kept fighting despite all that because it, it's no surprise. It's if, hard to, yeah, it's hard like, to dig well, deep I can't, What am like, I doing here? Yeah. You know, I can't get a decision for doing the right thing. What is yeah. the point? Yeah. Yeah, it's hard to not kind of let that get to you. Yeah. Um, and at the end of the day, you play to the whistle, you know. That's what, that's what we always kind of like go back to. It's like just play to the whistle and if it gets blown, then you stop. <laughs> um. Another good thing, let's just turn it around quickly. Um, chippy report. I know that Georgia and Marnie uh, do chippy reports from mm. the grounds. Um, the chippies on the side where, like, the grandstand is, you know, like that, like, big fast food bit there? Next to the cricket nets area. Yes, yeah. shit chippies. Oh, yeah. Good potato cakes, though. I will good say. potato cakes. Yeah. The I went round because I was in the grandstand, like, on the other side. I went down to... The food that's down next to like the bowls, bowls club. club. Yeah. There is a Mexican food truck down there that they do chippies Ooh. and they season it with oh, tahini. Yes. <laughs> and it is so good. <laughs> Very good chippies. And then like in the sauce options, um, like that they just have that you can put on, they have like chipotle hot sauce. Ooh, so nice. I did chipotle hot sauce and tomato sauce and it was ah, <laughs> okay. incredible chippies. Right. Fresh, hot. Well seasoned, good chip. So bowls club side. Bowls club side. I will remember that. Go to the yeah, because I was like, oh shit, there's no like chippy van down here. There's just a Mexican thing. I'll have a look, see what they've got. Chippies. Hell yeah. Perfect. Hell yeah. I mean, I think it might be illegal to be a vendor at a footy club and not have chips. Oh, truly. Yeah. Yeah. It was like hot donuts. Yeah. Mexican man with chips. Donuts and chips. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's footy. I was walking back and some old guy, like, I think him and his mate had bought, like, a bag of donuts and there was three in there and they only wanted one each and he had a spare. And he was like, do you want a donut? And I was like, nearly went, yes. And then I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not taking a donut of some weird old guy at the football. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, no coaches votes out yet. So shall we head to a break? Let's do it. Let's do it. Welcome back. You're listening to the Sash Women's and we're looking ahead to round nine, our last round of the regular season against Richmond. Second last round of the regular Second last? Come. Really? Oh, shit. Might just wipe that out of my brain, haven't I? <laughs> um, yes, round nine, Richmond. It is dream time, um, Saturday the 26th of October at 8.15 p.m. Is that? That's local time, isn't it? Yeah, I'd okay, assume so. It must be, that's too late. I yeah, I was going to say. Yeah. 
Fucking daylight savings. <laughs> um, up at TIO Stadium on beautiful Larrakee country in Darwin. And the round theme this year is Spirit Strong Game On. I'm excited. Yeah, I'm pumped it's in Darwin. Yeah, it's going to yeah, be great. Yeah. It, it was fun going to it at Icon last year, but it just didn't have the same vibe as as that nah, Darwin game from a few years ago in COVID. It's going yeah, to be so much fun. Yeah. Well, I think they've, they've got to do something about the lights, either at Punt Road or at Windy Hill, because oh, if they're going to play yeah. this game in Melbourne, like it's always going to be a night game. Yeah. And just doing it at Icon just doesn't feel... Doesn't feel right. Yeah. It's like we're it's playing the on, same as doing it yeah. at um, Witten Oval. Not right. Yeah. It's like it's enemy territory. Yeah. Um, before we get into the game, I think like also having it up in Darwin will mean that um, we'll probably get a few TV bombers over, which will be fun. Yeah. Oh, yeah, cool. um, and there's a new... Doc- yeah, that Like My Brother documentary that I really want to see um, that's now out. So... Um, yeah, that'll be great. I'm I'm just really excited to see how we engage with the community up there as well. Mm-hmm. And hopefully, um, yeah, our bombers, our bombies will be able to get up there maybe a little bit earlier and do a bit of community stuff. So, um, how are Richmond looking? Uh, Richmond, uh, a strange one. Like, <laughs> they've, they've been in the top four all season, I think, just about um, before losing this weekend and dropping down to fifth. But... They don't strike me as a top four team in any respect, really. Like, they've had a pretty easy draw. They've only played two top eight teams so far, the Kangas and Port in Melbourne. Mm. Everybody else outside the eight, which is, you know, not too bad. We've played three or four, I think. Um, yeah. They've come off a pretty bad loss to Melbourne. Melbourne have improved in the last few weeks, but I think if you're looking at paper and seeing that Richmond are fifth, we're eighth, Mm. You might not be very confident, but I think we come into this as favourites, I would say, anyway. Yeah. What do you reckon, Harry? Yeah, I think, yeah, I think he's exactly right. I think their ladder position is, isn't is really where they're at. I don't think they're the fifth best team in the league. No. Um, and, yeah, that they had, they've had some strange results, but, yeah, like mm. they just haven't played anyone great. I think if we... If we want to be a finals team, we win this game. Yeah, oh, oh, I mean, we have to. Yeah, I think I think it's <laughs> well. It's weird. It's like um, Jody put the put the run home of like all the contenders in, and, and kind of everyone's got a similar situation, yeah. which is one hard game, one easier game. Yeah, this is our harder game because yeah. Carlton aren't good at all. Yeah, so I, I don't think I don't think it's over necessarily no. if we lose, but you know, if we want to be a team that plays finals, you you go and win this game. Yeah. And I think that's kind of the equaliser as well as just like the conditions up in Darwin. Um, yeah, well, who knows? And I mean, we played pretty well um, against Gold Coast up in that kind of condition up there. So I will say that that was a day game and we did talk about it at the time that mm. if it's a, a night game, it's a different story. The, the, the heat history. transfers, but yeah, the the, uh, the humidity and the slickness yeah, are a bit different. Yeah, so yeah. I'll be interested to see. It could be a really different kind of game to anything we've played. I don't think we've played... Except we played a Gold Coast Twilight game once. That was last yeah year. last year. Yeah, yeah. the uh, that was a pretty awful loss to kick us out of finals. I believe just no, no, to oh not God. finish top four or something like that. Wasn't it? late. In the it was. Season. It was. Yeah, to not, it was to not get like a home that. final. Yeah, yeah. We yeah. would have finished six, fifth or sixth, and got a home yeah, final, okay. which we did. Yeah. But and Gold Coast were a much better team last year than they are this mm. year. But mm. yeah, that we haven't played a lot in what this condition will be, which is sort of warm, humid. Yep. Dewey. Yeah. Yeah, I was just looking at the um the weather. It's a max of thirty five on Saturday. <laughs> Probably not at eight fifteen at night though. No, yeah, it might be twenty nine. Yeah. <laughs> it's gonna be sticky. Um medium chance of showers most likely later in the day, chance of a thunderstorm. But like it's not as much like it's gonna rain on Friday, it looks like. Yeah. So I mean, if probably it's, a little if it's, bit wet underfoot. Yeah, I mean if it actually does rain, it'll change it completely because yeah. then it, it won't be sort of yeah we, it's weird it's like it won't, it won't be the same kind of slippery no as it is when it's dry and dewy yeah so Rich, yeah. richmond torch just a couple of years ago a really really wet game in port melbourne it started absolutely bucking down at half time and then they took over the game so hopefully the rain stays away and it's just yeah. a little bit slippery rather yeah. than wet yeah and i think we played them at, we played them Night game at Icon last year mm. and towed them up, mm. um, but that was dry from memory. Mm. Um, I'm so glad you guys have memories. <laughs> <laughs> <out> there, 
<laughs> was I? I don't even know. <laughs> yeah, you, you were seeing one right behind me. Oh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> My short-term memory is shot to shit. Um, players, who are we keeping an eye on? Obviously, Monconti. Yeah. Yeah. Like, League BNF, potentially, this mm-hmm. year. I think she's top five or three, even, in the coaches' votes. Mm-hmm. Um, basketball background. Um, <laughs> we, we don't need to talk about Conti too much, I don't think. Yeah. Um, Sheeran, kind of in the same category. Like, we all know Sheeran. She's, you know... Been the Harris Andrews of the league for a long time. Yeah. Just absolutely impenetrable across halfback. Great interceptor, great rebounder, great contested mark, pretty difficult to deal with. Yeah. Um, Ellie McKenzie, number one pick from 2020. She's had a really, really, really strong year. Probably her best so far, just about. Mm-hmm. Um, another player that's not um, one of the bigger names or the most damaging, but I just really like the way she goes about it. Yes, yeah, the small forward is. She kicked two or three on us last year, I think. She did, remember, yeah, yeah. yeah. She's quite nimble and like got a really good snap, which is kind of a strange thing yeah. to say. But I've she's got a good eye for goal. Yeah, was, just about every goal I've seen her kick is just sort of yeah, so. one turn spin around over yeah. the shoulder. Like so, she's pretty fun to watch. That's fun. If anyone wants to see a fun highlight though, talking about uh, Isla Shear and look at uh, Paige Scott's uh, work on her last year yeah. in our game where she just puts a massive hip and shoulder, <laughs> sends her flying, <laughs> runs on, snaps the goal. Um, that was the sealer. So that was great. <laughs> Yeah, just just give us that again, please, Scotty. Yeah. Um, that'll be great. Thanks, mate. Uh, Katie Brennan came, came off in the second quarter with an ankle injury. Have have we we? Ha, I mean, injuries we haven't aren't. seen any. Yeah, yeah, injuries aren't out yet. Are and, they? and last week, Erica O'Shea went off in North with an ankle injury and was in a boot, and then mm. she played an absolutely. That's right. Absolutely towed us up. I saw her uh, tra- <laughs> uh, warming up, and I was like, "Oh, she's playing." And then she and you were like, "Oh no, she's playing." Yeah, and she murdered <laughs> us. So. Um, yeah, I'm not ruling Katie Brennan out on that basis. Yeah, yeah, it might just. I mean, I mean, maybe that movie was just a preventative. I don't know. Yeah, Usually, if the boots on, you're pretty done. Yeah, you think so? Yeah, you, I, I mean, it. I don't think it. Maybe means it was like all it's psychological long-term, warfare. But you'd think they wouldn't put a boot on if you're going to play next week. That's yeah. what I would have thought, but evidently not. Yeah, at North Melbourne anyway. Yeah. So we'll see if Katie Brennan, um, yeah, plays this week. She is one to watch out for, though, if she does play. Oh, she's absolutely. Definitely. Yeah. She's really sort of smart, mm. especially with, like, her movement. And she's not, like, incredibly quick or anything, but mm-hmm. sort of powerful and, and really intelligent about getting to the right areas. Mm. Um, but we have dealt with her well in the past. She's never really got on top of our defense. Yeah. So hopefully that stays the same this week. Yeah. And looking at our injury list Hopefully Amber Clark and Georgia G will be back for selection. Yeah, they were both listed as tests. Uh, Love that. Six or seven days ago, whenever the injury. I feel came like out I last. saw. Yeah, when um, they put out our photos from training, that Clarkie was out there. Okay. Having a run around, so that's um, that's a good sign. If there were tests last week, you would you'd have to assume Up that they're pretty ready to go. Yeah. yeah. Who they come in for? Maybe I mean, Mia Bush maybe comes out. Mm. Williamson maybe comes out. I, I think um, they're going to have to adjust the mix a little bit. I feel like we're just too tall at the moment. Yeah. I feel like, you know, we've got Goff and Williamson have come in recent weeks. So it's Goff, Williamson, Gamble, Clark, Gay, too good. Mm. Um, Gamble, if I didn't say her already, Brooke Brown. They're, yeah. We are very tall. Yeah. And we got murdered with pace and, and run yeah. this week against North Melbourne. Like, I think we need... That's why I would bring Clark and G back, definitely. And yeah. I think probably Goff, Williamson. Yeah. It's better. I mean, we moved Gamble back to defense this week. Yeah. Obviously, to deal with the big North monsters. So maybe she goes back forward. Yeah. And, and Richmond don't, don't have that tall timber. Yeah, forward. exactly. Yeah. So we, we don't probably need the extra cattle down mm. back, um, which means Gamble might go forward, which means Williamson goes yeah. out, yeah. maybe Goff as well. Yeah. yeah. But I think we do need to get quicker and shorter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> quicker and shorter, please. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, like, that's that's also good for just um, picking up the crumbs too, for mm. people that can come in and, yeah, get that sweep and um, get those low balls as well. Shall we look at some predictions? Let's do it. Why not? Who's yeah. our first goal kicker? I am going to say Clark is going to come back in and just have a screamer. I was Ooh, thinking that. Nice. But then I was like... And we don't even know if she's playing or not. I so don't that's care. Bold. <laughs> that's bold, and I'm going bold. But that was my initial thought. Um, Jesus, I don't know, Geordie, You got any ideas? Um, 
Yeah, look, I I don't like same too good. Uh, so I will go with something a little more out there, and I will say something stupid like <laughs> best kini. I don't know. <laughs> Why not? Bikini, let's go. Um, who's going to kick the first goal? I think it will be Bannister. Hell yeah. Would have loved for her to kick a goal in North Melbourne, but mm. here we are. That's true. Um, she had some, some chances. She did. No, she had a We do need to work on goal kicking because our do. goal kicking, yeah. apart from Gamble, everyone My else, God. I have zero confidence. Not, I, th- I think particularly bad at Windy Hill, too. I haven't looked at any stats, but yeah, it, feels, it feels worse. <laughs> it feels worse at Windy, yeah. But it's like, it, it's not that they're all bad kicks. No. It's just they're inc- they're all incredibly inconsistent. Scott, too good. Bannister, I, I don't have confidence that they'll kick the goal when they yeah. line it up. I mean, yeah. unless it's like right in front from a very short distance. Gamble's the only one G- where yeah, like Gamp, yeah. if she doesn't kick it, it'll be a slight miss. Maybe know? Alexander yeah. as well. Yeah. Yeah, Alexander. But she just doesn't seem to get many shots of no, goal this year. No. She's playing kind of more yeah. on the ground. Mm. Who's our best on for this week? Uh, I think... Nan Scorn. Mm. Yeah, I think she might. Yeah, I, th- I think she'll get the best of th- their midfield. Like the their midfield is their strength. Um, with Conti and and McKenzie and things. But yeah, I think I think Nan's can get it done. She had she was she was all right against North Melbourne. Yeah, had a had a good crack. So I'll back it in. Yeah, I feel like n- uh, Richmond are one of those weird uh, midfields that they're almost lighter bodied than. Mm. We are, yeah. Mm. Uh, yeah. So we probably have the power advantage. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think so. Maybe between, not speed, but between Nan Scorn and Maddie, yeah, I yeah. Think we'll um, body them. Yeah, I'm gonna go Steph Kane. Oh, okay. Yeah. I feel Ooh. like she was brilliant against Richmond last year. I think she likes the matchup. I feel like I have to go into my mind palace. <laughs> <laughs> um. It could be quite transitional is what yeah. I'm thinking as a game. So yeah. I feel like it's going to be smooth movers. Mm. If, it, if, if it's not too if it's not too, Well, simple, except yeah. for the mm, wetness mm, factor. Mm. If it, I mean, if a bucket's down, that's a Nan Scorn yeah. Uh, yeah. special. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that's, that's a long she sleeve. She rolls her sleeves yeah. up and she's like, let's well, fucking go. Will she be wearing long sleeves? It's a night game. So she will always, no, be, wearing she will always be wearing long sleeves. And it'll be hot. She will always be wearing yeah, long sleeves. You're right. You are right. I know. <laughs> I know that I'm right. <laughs> she wore long sleeves in like 32 degrees yeah. at Gold Coast during the day. She's it's wearing true. them for a She's night gonna game be wearing in Darwin. Them for a night game. <laughs> Don't want to get that moon tan, you know? Um, I'm going to say, and this might be a bit out of pocket, but I reckon Killer Whales. I reckon she I like might get that. some good clearances awesome. and just kind of dominate in the in the ruck this week. Very nice. Um, I've completely lost my spot. All right. Result and margin. Um, I will say we get this done by 15 points. Ooh, that's a real, like, I've told you about my, my tipping <laughs> approach when I have to do the margin and the tips, cause I can never really guess and never really judge it, but I just like flick my thumb Slide and let it. the wheel, <laughs> let the wheel spin. <laughs> and I'm like, that'll do. <laughs> that's usually around 15. <laughs> Um, I'm going to say a win and I'm going to say 12 points. I think it's only going to be a couple of majors. Yeah. I'm going to say eight points. Ooh. Okay. Jody, you uh, did the work on this. Do you want to have a chat through everyone's run home for the rest of the season? I can give it a red hot crack. Go on. Um, I love, I love a ladder predictor. I've probably <laughs> spent about 45 minutes on it today doing all of the you know various implications. Um, but the teams that are sort of in and around us are Port, who are currently seventh, Melbourne currently ninth, and then St Kilda and West Coast are a game behind us. Um, as Ari said earlier, all those teams have got one easy, one hard apart from Port. So you'd expect them to beat Suns and Giants. So they should be fine. Mm-hmm. Um, so we really are battling for that last spot, I would say, with Melbourne, St Kilda and West Coast. Maybe not West Coast so much with their awful, awful, awful percentage. Um, but like if, if we beat Richmond here, we're locked in. Yeah. And it also means that Richmond would be level with games and they'd drop down to seventh or eighth as well. So okay. it would be pretty fun seeing them fall out of, fall well, out of finals. Yeah. The thing is Richmond have got Hawthorne the last game. Exactly. I'd say they'd lose. So we, yeah, it, it pushes Richmond right into the mix and probably us out of it if we beat them this week. Yeah. They're on 150%. So 
I would love to see Richmond fall out and finish ninth. That's just me. So, <laughs> but I, given we got Carlton, you'd think we're going to be a game ahead of them if we yeah, beat them. Yeah, yeah. I'm just hoping so that percentage doesn't shouldn't matter them. against them at least, which probably yeah does guarantee us. But yeah, I think Melbourne have made a really good run late. They've had a couple mm. of good wins in the last few weeks, but they're still only on seventy five percent, which is a good twenty percent behind us. Yeah. So, so if we get a couple of wins on board, then it's yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah I, you still wouldn't tip against the Hawks, would you? I'm not sure. Like the Hawks, I only watched the first sort of 15, 20 minutes of the Hawks GWS game. Mm-hmm. GWS kicked the first two goals and I thought they were on, but then Hawthorne kicked the next eight or something ridiculous. But mm. I the think Hawks the have Hawks lost once this year. Yeah, yeah. I, I think they're there. 200%. I think Melbourne, Melbourne have really hit the straps. So I'm, I'm half tipping Melbourne for that one. But again, even if they do, we should still be okay. Okay. I think. Hopefully. Yeah. Well, if we win this week, we will be. Cause yeah. We'll, yeah. 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 Let's just win this week. And, e- even you know, if they beat then the we Hawks, won't have to worry about it. smash the Hawks. Yeah. yeah. They could yeah. smash the Pies, though, to be honest. Yeah. So. Yes. Um, taking a look around the grounds. Speaking of Richmond, I was watching their game um, from last week. Um, and they're pride Guernsey. I know that we talked about that we didn't like the, the sash that they have. But the long sleeve is really cool. Like this, the rainbow kind of extends down into like a single strip down each oh. arm. Oh, okay. And I was like, that actually looks kind of sick. I didn't um, love the yellow shorts though. I thought the yellow shorts with the yeah, black jersey no, was a little bit much. It was a bit, yeah. It was a bit, um... Like, like when Essendon, yeah. was it the 70s or 80s when they had the red the red shorts? Yeah, true. Just didn't sit right. <laughs> we we wore red shorts this year sometime. Was yeah, did we play that at that in the Sydney game? So were we wearing red Guernseys and red shorts? Maybe it was that. Not. We definitely wore. When red we shorts. were like, why the fuck are we wearing this clash strip? We don't need to be. Yeah, maybe. Maybe it was that game. We definitely wore red shorts this year, though. Yeah, yeah. at least once. I think it's because they don't do white shorts in women's. No, mm. thank so, God. So if you're not wearing black shorts, <laughs> it has to because be. of the clash. Yeah. You have to wear some other color, which is going to be red. Yeah, yeah. I'm very glad that we don't do white shorts in the women's. And then outside of that, um, so for the Indigenous round this year, um, there's a special shirt which I love dedicated shirt. Um, it was designed by proud Badima Yamachi Wajuk and Noongar woman Courtney Hodder and she plays for Brisbane Lions. Jet. Um, yes, Absolute Jet came over from Rugby Union, used to play for Queensland Reds. Um, in collaboration with the House of Darwin, which is a social enterprise and for-profit um, you know, organisation founded by a former AFL player, Sean Edwards. He played for the Giants and for Essendon for a hot second. Um, and it's really fucking, it's really cool. Mm. It's, um, I mean, I love House of Darwin stuff anyway. Um, and it's, yeah, it's a themed kind of like spirit strong game on, um, shirt and on the back it's got, uh, personal details of like Hoda and her story. Um, it includes her like clan totem, um, and the scrunchie that she wears during every game, which is very cute. So it's got a bit of her like actual personality in it as well. Um, and she was saying that like, you know, it's, uh, you know, able to showcase her talent, represent her culture and make her family proud. Um, you know, the stories about her, but also about her culture and people. Um, so yeah, so it's like, you know, one of the quotes is like, there are lots of Indigenous communities that are less fortunate and don't have the opportunities that city kids have. So I hope this collaboration inspires kids to pick up a footy and want to get into the sport because it's such an amazing culture. So you can buy the, the shirts um, on the House of Darwin website and um, they're yeah, available to purchase now and all through Indigenous Round and proceeds are going to the AFL's Cape York House, which is a not-for-profit organisation uh, that provides education, employment and training opportunities for young Indigenous men and women from far north Queensland um, and also towards House of Darwin's Hoop Dreams program. So, yeah, it's uh, I think it's about 70 bucks and they rock. Yeah, it, it, it actually it does look really, really, it's really It's a cool. really cool yeah. shirt. Um, yeah, and it's got the little uh, AFLW Indigenous Round uh, little logo on the front as well, which we love. And I think that might be it. Just on the Indigenous Round thing. So <laughs> yes. Can we, are we ever going to, as a club, mm. have the Indigenous name? 
Are we even gonna be able to I do would that? love for that to Is happen. Is there a reason why? I mean, like, I was contemplating it for this for a number of years now. I wonder if it's because. I mean, because the teams that t- a... tend to, to do it are like Melbourne. Yes. Because they've got a very. The name for Melbourne yes, is NAM. Therefore, yes. it's a very seamless. Yeah. Whereas, like, what is. What would it be? Were we to have exactly, because you know, that's like, is there an Aboriginal name for Essendon, or is it I the don't region know if around is, Essendon? Yeah, um, I know I have. Sorry, if you need to just because then like stuff like like Maribyrnong is like a Maribyrnong would be a good Footscray one. Yeah, mm. although it's like half Footscray, half us, really, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, that is kind of the border in between the two, isn't it? Um, because you could go to like, uh, like language base. So instead of it being Nam, because Nam is kind of like the collective or like, um, what what's the country name? I've For Melbourne, forgotten. yeah, uh, Wurundjeri. Yeah, well, there's Wurundjeri, and then there's Woiwurrung as well, and then like if you're looking down at. Um, Geelong, it's like Wathurong and stuff. So that's more like the the language or the dialect. Yeah, and they're like so Bunwurrung. Like, yeah, Bunwurrung country, yeah. and it's like the or the cool like the Kulin Nation. I think is like like obviously the, group, the larger the larger yeah. um, collection of of um, communities. But yeah, I think I I do wonder if maybe there's too much, um, like too many. Uh, clubs in all small, in the same spot, area, yeah. and so they can't like because we would all just be numb. <laughs> um, but I do wonder if like maybe if they end up doing it, we look at like yeah, like our connection with Tiwi Islands and stuff, mm. and we be the Tiwi Bombers for mm. that. Mm. That's good um, idea. Yeah, and then you know you've got um, other teams that maybe collect you know their talent pool comes from like APY lands and stuff so that that might be a cool way to do it yeah, that's kind be. of a bit of a differentiator than um everyone just being called nam <laughs> <laughs> but yeah it'd be sick to see like um yeah some more clubs get in on that as well cuz mm. we've got what we've got Frio we've got Port Adelaide Port Adelaide West Coast did it last year yeah yeah they were the eagles of the translation was Eagles of the West. Oh, cute. Oh, nice. I love okay. that. Um, I feel like there's more. Yatapulti. Yeah, yeah Yatapulti. Yeah, is that Port, that one? Or was that Frio? Yatapulti. I always mix up Port and Frio. Yeah, so. And, yeah, the Eagles that were Wajak something or other. Wajak Noongar? Yeah. Uh, no. No. Oh, Fremantle is Walyalup. Oh, Walyalup, yes. So, so Yatapulti must have been Port Adelaide Yatapulti is Port Adelaide. Nam is Melbourne. Did any of the Queensland teams have? Not that I can remember. I don't think Because so. it could be like the Mianjin Lions. That's sick. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what I mean. Like Brisbane has it really easy. Yeah. So just do that. I'm assuming Gold Coast, it's the same. And then got... Adelaide could be Tandanya. Gold Coast, I know, is... Um, Adelaide are the Kiwana, Kiwana this year. Kiwana, yeah, yeah, that's it. The Weagles are... Walich Marawa. Did someone say that before? Oh, yeah, because that's Eagle of the West. Okay. Yeah, cool. I think, like... You think I Geelong could do it as well, pretty easily. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I'd be, yeah, I'd be interested to see if it's um if it's something that expands maybe next season with the men's. Mm. Um, and it'd be sick to see, like, the women's follow suit with that as well and rename their teams for Indigenous Round. Definitely. Hmm. Get on it, bummers. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever's listening over there. Um, but also on top of that, like the Indigenous Guernsey is right across the, uh, the 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 league this year are very cool. Oh, they are called Kuana. Sorry. I'm just looking just at it that. now. Yeah, but like the in the women's. Oh, St. Kilda. Yeah, the, Euro, whatever's Euro. in the men's is in the women's. Oh, okay. It's universal. But Adelaide, this is the first year Adelaide did it, I think. Because uh, they didn't used to. Sorry. That's my fault. Oh, yeah, cool. Yes, and Kildo is your rook. That's right. They did that last year. Yeah. The West Coast jersey is unbelievable. That's crazy. Yeah. 
That might be one of the best I've ever seen. That but just the use of colour in that is fantastic. And it's got like the big eagle head. Mm. Um, the Western Australian outline. That's so oh, nice. yeah, true. That's great. That's really cool. Oh, North Melbourne, two jerseys in a row have gone for a very cute kangaroo. That is cute. I also going. like the Nam one with the heart in the middle. Yeah. That's yep. very nice. Um, and I really like Hawthorns as well. Like just just the different use mm. of like doing the um poos and ways. The, yeah, the 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 poos and ways. Um but just kind of having it more circular. Um and that kind of North doesn't approach. doesn't have it as bad with the indigenous jumper as they do with the pride one. Because it's very Why? difficult. Well, it's just the color clash with the. It's very hard to get rainbow colors into brown and gold. Oh yeah. Whereas yeah, you can do something interesting with brown and gold with an indigenous inspired oh, that's true. <laughs> Yes, that's very true. It's very ochre kind of um, vibes. Yeah, they all look. I mean, I I don't see. I like. I quite like the Collingwood one as well with the. Um, the Carlton one's a bit. The person in the middle. I've, I've, I swear I've seen that before. I mean, it's obviously a little bit different, but they've done the that Carlton before. one. Well, I just yeah. don't know why they don't do something with the, the the badge, you know, whatever you call it, the CFC thing. Like, yeah, why it's just exactly as normal. Yeah, it's like we we always do something with the sash. It's always mm. something interesting. Mm. Yeah, they all look great. Um, they are up on the AFLW website. Um, if you want to check those out. And it's like all really interactive as well, which is quite nice. It's a really nice way to um to uh do it. Oh and the um and if you scroll down as well, there's the umpire design, which was designed by Indigenous umpire Josh James. He's Nunga Wandandi Buja man. Um and is a current umpire. So that's really cool. And then there's Oz kick designs. Oh my god, I love mm. this. And then obviously, like the Sharon um, is designed differently too. So yeah, I think we've got some um, some cool stuff coming up. Um, oh my god, I'm just like I'm absolutely flagging. <laughs> <laughs> Let's wrap it up. Yeah. Let's get out of here. I think so. All right. Uh, thank you so much for listening. Um, as always, you can. Subscribe to our socials, um, sign up to our Discord and be part of the conversation. As always, the men's chats are popping off in there with all the trades and draft prospects and all that kind of stuff that I don't care about until it's all said and done. Mm -hmm. Here, here. Yeah. <laughs> I will never be excited by a pick swap. No. I don't even fucking know what that means half the time. A lot of people I'm like, none of my business. A lot of people on Discord seem to have lost the will to, to, to believe anymore. <laughs> The spirit has... and Rob's changed his uh, changed his name yeah. as as Paco has left the building. Yeah. He's gone from Paco to Caco. So, <laughs> um, yeah, come on in, uh, join join the chaos, and we will see you next week. Absolutely, up, up the, the bombers, planes. Out of the planes. <laughs>